That, that last picture was not my school. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm delighted to be invited today. My, my thinking of what to speak to you about is kind of from the school perspective and um, where we are, kind of what it's like at the kind of the, the chalk phase and, and to help you as kind of professionals who, to kind of find a way in because that's, we've heard from uh, Verity talking about the kind of the, at the policy level but what's it actually like on the ground in terms of, uh, of, of access and getting it through? So first of all, just to uh, do a click. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, sorry, go, that's it. So um, I'm a head teacher at uh, Willowfield School in Walthamstow. So there's some of our lovely children there. So we're, you know, we're a successful school, uh, doing very well. Uh, in a, in a very nice new building. I also come today to speak to you with a kind of a broader, not just from my individual school, but uh, I also uh, chair the, the group of secondary heads uh, across the London borough that I work in. So I, you know, I bring a, a broader insight to that. And also I'm a regional representative for the Association of School and College Leaders, which so I kind of bring a, a broader awareness and experience beyond just Willowfield, but a lot of it, of course, will be Willowfield-centric. So that, that's who I am, that's what, uh, you know, my, my background. So the, the thing that, which I'm sure you will appreciate, but it is worth saying loud and clear, with the, you can imagine if you think what it's been like over the last two years working in schools, with the demands upon us, even in normal times, it's, it's quite ridiculous what schools have to deal with. And over the last two years with COVID, it went to kind of the exponential kind of increase and it was, was extraordinary, it really has been. And those conflicting demands that were kind of heightened have, become, have, have remained heightened. And the, uh, the rate at which schools are expected to respond and react and do things is, is, is quite incredible. So when you are trying to find a way into schools, that's the first thing that you, you that we all need to realize that the whatever fantastic information that you are bringing there will be multiple other demands upon the school leaders and the schools that you are trying to get into so it, it is that's my the opening by the title of it is about winning hearts and minds because if this is going to be this fantastically important work it is going to have the long-term purchase it is really important to get to win hearts and minds because school leaders who are the very influential people that you, you need to kind of get into the minds of. It, it, it is about winning their hearts and minds. So if you can click on the next one for me. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, so that's, as I've said, and that's the thing you've got to think about, it's, uh, I was at, funny enough, at an ASCO conference last week, and they were I can't remember the figures, but the amount of shoulds that schools are now facing, so on top of all the statutory stuff that schools have to do around the well-being and safeguarding, there are a multiple, multitude of documents and requirements that say should, and should is shorthand for must eventually. So, um, and there is at the moment so much uncertainty, so I think it's going to be a little bit quicker. Now, the, this started during, just to give you a context of it, we're, we're being fed requirements daily. So, I, you know, I will in my inbox, e e inbox every day get requirements with the list of these are the latest things, and they're all worthwhile. It's not to say, but it is filtering which ones am I going to choose? So, imagine if you've got a great project where you've gone to the DFE and others. And it's embedded in one of those daily emails. So you might think, great, I've got in, I've got the DFE working with me. It might be one of those lines. And that one line could be the day that suddenly there's a childcare emergency in the corridor, there's a fire alarm, and it gets clicked to missed. Two or three of the schools missed it, it it's gone. So it, it, it's the kind of little and often almost, uh, it, it's a, a thing with it. At the moment, the other pressures, and I'll just give you very quickly, I'm not going to give you a soft story of schools because everyone's feeling at the moment. At the moment now, the, there is a, a new pay rise being uh, just, just come through. Um, so schools are, schools budgets now, it's the latest thing. So you could, again, anything which is going to require schools to commit some money is, is really, really difficult at the moment. 
Um, and I'm talking to a couple of people in the room today with the, the recruitment crisis that schools are facing at the moment. Again, be aware of that. It could be a fantastic project a school wants to engage with, but getting the, the staff that, that, to be there and, and as well, keeping the buildings and more about the buildings at the moment, because that's really crucial. But the, the stock of schools in the country is very variable and some are not in good condition. And that's another uh, significant drain on it. And at the moment, we have a prime minister. We don't know how long that prime minister is going to be there. I'm not going to pass any comments on that particular. You may have your own views. So see tactfully moving on. But there is that there is that uncertainty, and that uncertainty is really being felt in schools at the moment, where we, we just don't know what's going to be happening. Because there is a, you, you as as non kind of not not working in schools day to day may or may not be aware. Some of you will be. There's actually a white paper that is has been published which is about restructuring the school system since Liz Truss has, uh, and this uh, change of administration is paused. So schools are in this kind of real vein of uncertainty. We don't know that what is going to happen next. Um, and then we have the summer, having raised awareness, we suddenly had this pressure that the buildings are too hot. So that pressure now has really got into heads minds. And it's in fact, it's one of the things that I've heard from other union reps and other unions. The worry now is about how are we going to deal with hot buildings now? And that is the, the thing now that is really exercising minds a lot. And the other things that have gone before it have, have kind of gone off the um, radar a bit. Now, with COVID for schools, COVID, like the rest of the country, has been incredibly difficult, problematic. You know, the, the things that we were having to deal with day to day. I mean, we as a school, I mean, get, we're here, I'm here today because of the link with Tapas from very early on, because we saw the importance of it. And we are very committed as a school and we are very happy to spread the, the word of that. But one of the good things that COVID did, if you can assign some a silver lining to it, was it raised awareness about the importance of air quality. If you were to go back three years ago, schools didn't ever talk really about air quality. It was never on the kind of uh, the people's minds. Because of COVID, in the midst of COVID, people started talking about it. The awareness was raised and it was a real positive. And I've been in some of those meetings I talked about with other colleagues with real concern and worry about it. Now, what has happened over the last six months now people have stopped talking about air quality. The other crises have, have replaced it. So you're now in a situation from all that heightened awareness because of all these crises since, schools, it's not at the forefront of their mind. And if uh, is a, it wasn't this student said, it's a picture of two lovely students sat there, but I, I had a young child come up to me uh, two weeks ago and say, so what was COVID, okay? Now, that's significant, I explained and talked about coronavirus, and then she said, oh, right, yeah, yeah that, that doesn't, doesn't matter anymore, does it? Now, that little example, if you take that into the minds of uh, across the community and in schools at the moment, it's kind of been pushed away, as I say. If people aren't thinking about it, because they've got so many other things, they're not thinking about air quality issues. Now, I'd um, been in, uh, we're having an extension built at the moment at school, the school's been extended. Now in those, uh, we're working with the architects and they're doing a great job, the school building, the estate is great, it's all going very well. But how many conversations do you think there have been had that have been about air quality? How many times has it been raised? It's not at all, it's not coming up. There's been no talk of it about it at all. So it has, this is one of the challenges that for from a, a point of heightened awareness, because of everything that's going on, schools are not thinking about it now. So that, that's, that's a challenge that, that, that we all face with going forward with it. And that's one of the things now that we've got. Do we open, do we shut the windows? Do we call, do we not call? You know, and that is actually a picture just outside of my school windows. So there is a bit of space to the front of it. So a couple of you who may have been to the school, okay? But we have very polluted roads outside. We have a, a very green local authority who have introduced what we call a mini Holland project where they're getting uh, more and more people to cycle. But what that's done is, which is good, of course it's a positive thing, but it's forced traffic onto the main roads and that main road happens to run past that school. So you've got, that's just a, a, you know, a small example, but it does, they are the pressures. I mean, that, that isn't 
from uh, from our school. But it, they, those are the kind of pressures we've got. We don't have many windows to open anyway. But you know, if I just click on the next thing to to kind of to so. This is a, a, something called Schools Week, which is a really interesting journal that goes to that many school leaders read. I actually rely upon it, and it's talking now about. So this is what's being talked about. It's not about air quality, how the energy cap affects your schools. The schools are worrying how are we going to cope over the coming time ahead. That headlines like that. School head teachers get one. Uh, price spikes of four hundred percent. So you've got this kind of thing going in. And another one, which, number seven, being ruthless, ensure that doors and windows are closed. You know, that, that's the kind of subliminal messages that are now into people, into schools' minds. So that's, that's the pressure and the kind of the, the, the conflict uh, and tension there is with stuff at the moment with this. And, and as you all know, the variety of buildings you know, Verity was talking about the, uh, the monitors and things that have gone in um, and where they've gone in and the air purifiers, it was great, but they, they didn't have the capacity to send it out to all the schools, of course. And it was like, we, we didn't get any of the air purifiers and it went to some. And that's not being critical. That's just a stark reality of where we were at that point. But it is, um, you know, you, you have crowded areas like this. You know, this is our um, main entry, which is lovely, it's spacious, and uh, it's very well designed. We were very well looked after, so our building is fantastic. In the middle of summer, when it was really hot, we we have a forced air flow system, which is, of course, interesting to draw in the polluted air in. But nevertheless, the temperature in that building during the 40 degrees stuff was, was fine. So you have schools where you are considerably better off, but across the entire state, it is incredibly variable. And of course, the state of the public purse at the moment means that the schools that are in a bad state are not going to have any rebuild um, money coming their way. So it is you there. I mean, that is the classic, particularly for those of you that um, are not based in that's particularly London or, or across England. That is the classic Victorian school board buildings, which there's many of them there. Fantastic, solid, lovely buildings. I've worked in them. I, I went to a private school that looked just like that. But Again, in terms of airflow, air quality, et cetera, incredibly different challenges to have in a, in a modern building that, that I now work in. So, um, and, that, and that's a reality. Uh, that, that, that is from a classroom taken uh, a few weeks ago. The kids are sitting on top of each other, very close proximity. You'll have different uh, kind of uh, designs. You could have a classroom set often like this when you're away. But the children are very, very close. And Verity talked about so many classrooms and so many children when you get lots of teenagers together. It can sometimes be the case. But it is, that's an inevitability. That was an interesting picture, actually, because the child that um, uh, actually um, tweeted that picture in the midst of the pandemic, I think, got in serious trouble for it for his own school. But you might have been even kind of suspended temporarily for it. So that was a picture taken during the, the pandemic when we were trying to keep space. But that gives you an insight again into the pressures where we were having to have the children in bubbles. And that was a school that was trying to maintain a bubble. So that's hopefully gives you an insight to, to the difficult uh, kind of in that we've got. So I thought it would be good for me to just finish, to just give you a th few thoughts on how do we get into heads heads? So that, that's the reality, that's what we're dealing with. But it's like always, we've got to be optimistic. We've got to think, right, how do we find a way in? So that my, my thoughts on, on how we can do it. Firstly, when it comes to new builds, um, you've got a range of people. You have the people who arrange and all that, so they could be multi-academy trusts. There are less and less local authority schools left, although mine is still a local authority school. So you'll have local authority, you have governors. Those are the sort of people you, you've got to kind of get some purchase in with. They are the people that you need an in with, okay? But I've put on their head teachers because head teachers in schools are the lead professional. So they are the person that governors, maths will go to and we're expected to be experts on everything and now air quality. And as I said at the start, I'm no expert on air quality, certainly not in this esteemed company at all. Compared to my colleagues, I feel I know a little bit about it now. But so we are relying upon 
the kind of the expertise to help us get it right. Um, so that's the thing. The key influences on the day-to-day -day operation level, the people to try and get an in with are, are the head teacher, I'd say, because they are the ones who can then go influence the local authority, the mats, etc. They are the ones that I think we need to think, how can I get into the heads of the heads? That's the way to affect change and influence with this. So, um, and we are the ones day to day, as I said, who have to be the experts. So that, that, that's the reality of, of it. Um, so what else are we looking for? The, there isn't much, and this is, uh, it goes without saying, but nevertheless to say, if you're coming up with some really interesting ideas that require schools to, to commit a significant amount of money, they just won't have it at the moment. You know, with the, uh, the pay award I mentioned earlier on, schools are just on that alone. Schools are absolutely in a frenzy about how they are going to pay this 5% pay award when it's, um, it has been unfunded. So there's no money. So there, there is less money than there even was yesterday, six months ago. So if you come up with an idea and you say, we've got this fantastic idea that's going to need you to commit X, Y, and Z, it's going to be really hard. So that, that, that could be a, a stumbling block. Um, this, again, talking to uh, a group of people like yourself, to have stuff that is research informed for, for schools increasingly without continuing professional development, the best stuff is informed by research. So it's not just a gut feeling about you know, what we think works. So we rely as heads on looking, where's the evidence to back it up? So we're, we're kind of used to now looking for that. So to have the scientific evidence, again, that, that Verity talked about from a, a DFE perspective, that people like yourself can win, that's a real winner. So it's not just company X coming to us and saying, oh, we, you know, we'll do this for you at X pounds, but there is the research to back it up is absolutely crucial. So the work of all of you is going to be crucial in kind of opening minds to it as well. Um, the other thing that I would advise, is to make it relevant is to, is to have some kind of school or head teacher or, or kind of a teacher input to it so it's not just some academics who haven't worked in schools before saying these are the ideas so i think it'd be really useful to kind of identify find a, 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 i've referred to it as like the trojan horse idea get a head or some heads on board who can talk and kind of help sell it and say you know we've looked at it we can see it that's going to be crucial in, in the 20,000 emails and presentations. I've made up a figure there, but you, you know, you get the, the kind of the, the, the principle of it. Um, also have a think, and I, I, I talked about my own work with the uh, Association of School and College Leaders. They are two very trusted organizations that head teachers rely upon. So if you could get some kind of entry with them and get them on board with it as well, that would be another really useful way in of kind of convincing and getting head teachers and these school influencers on board by having them and, and the likes of Ascol and National Association of Head Teachers. I identify them because they are the ones who are the respective head teaching unions. So Ascol, which is my association, tends to typically have secondary head teachers. NHT, National Association of Head Teachers, tends to be primaries. So I would, I would definitely advise trying to make friends and get some entry with them, because if you have them having a, a significant number of head teachers percentage would be members of those two, one of those two. So um, the other thing is not forgetting kids. And again, this is where getting teachers involved is coming, with, coming up with resources where you can sell it to kids, because increasingly the, you know, the, the student voice is very crucial. And young, young people's an easier win, you've got to be honest. You know, kids get it. They will talk about it. They will be passionate. You'll get them in, on site. And schools like my own, and student voice is really important. And we genuinely really listen. And the student's uh, voice helps us to shape what happens next. So I don't think that we need, I talked about the influences being head teachers, but also think about how you can get some stuff that will get the, the, the kids really buying into it as well. And, and get some momentum driven from children as well. I think that's it. So I hope that's useful as an insight into, from my experience across schools of my own, 
of what some useful drivers and ways in to really uh, affect some change maybe. Okay, thank you.